What's up guys, it's Josh. I'm back with another video and today I want to cover the best backup solution I use in Linux. So as I said in the intro, I want to cover the best backup solution I use in Linux or I think is the best one to use in Linux for backing up your system files or you just mainly your home directory is what I use it for. But the application is called Borg. And let me go down and pull up their website and read a little bit about it. Okay, so I went in on and pulled up their website and the website is borgbackup.org. And I'll link it down in the description below. But let's read a little bit about it. Borg Backup gives you space efficient storage of backup, secure authenticated encryption. Then they have compression, uh, LZ4, which is the default, by the way, and Zlib, LZMA, and ZSTD. And then it also gives you mountable backups with Fuse. Uh, easy installation on multiple platforms so you can use it on Linux, Mac OS, BSD, etc. And also it's free software so that's one good thing I like about the actual application is free and open source. It has a BSD license, uh, let's see, backed by a large and active open source community. So this is a great application I wanted to show you guys, but they have some information. They have a demo page, which is basically what I'm going to do in this video. I want to demo how to actually set up uh, Borg, but you can easily check out their demo. They have uh, some demo videos that you could look at as well. I just wanted to do my own rendition of how to actually use the software or how I use the software. And then they have a lot of good information in the documentation. So check that out for yourself. Uh, you can read all the documentation that they have, and it should help you through using this application to its full potential. And also down here, you know, you can actually donate to that to the people that actually built this software. I always recommend people do that uh, because some people put in, you know, their time and effort into coming up with software for us users or us un Linux users uh, to actually use. So. It's always a good idea to donate to help these guys out for the time that they put in on building these applications. And then you can also contribute to the project um, by by helping the developers come up with new ways of improving the actual software for all of us to benefit from. So and they also have a support link down here and then it says pay for services. So if you're using this, I'm assuming if you're using this application, let's say for a business, then they can provide services to actually help you with using the software. So that's enough about their website. Like I said, I really like this application. I really support this application. So let me go on and get to showing you guys how to actually use it. Okay, so I have my terminal up and running and I already have some folders created for this demonstration. And this is just mainly to test, uh, just to show you guys how to actually use the software and set it up. Uh, so let me ls that directory and this will kind of simulate my home directory on my system. So let's ls test the test folder and you'll see I have two files created in there. And then the other folder I'm going to use is actually the test borg directory, uh, which has nothing in it. It's an empty directory and you can sim and we can simulate this as a, let's say external drive or something. Uh, which is fine. It'll work the same way. You have to mount that drive in a specific location on your system. If you understand how to mount, you know, hard drives, I will mount it to the mount directory. That way, when you unplug the hard drive from the system and plug it back in and mount it in that same location, the Borg, the Borg repository will work the same because if you mount it in a different location or if you, uh, if you mount the external hard drive in a different location, then Borg will be like, well, last time we connected to this repository, it was in X location. Are you sure you want to open it up? So that'll avoid it. Just make sure you mount it to the same location every single time when you unplug and plug up your drive where you're going to do your backups. So let me go down and show you guys the first thing, which is the help for Borg. So the way you look at the help is basically type in Borg and then help, press enter. 
This will give you all the information similar to the man page of how to actually use Borg. It breaks out the synopsis as well as the options. You can go through and check out the options. Uh, I'll show you the ones that I use, which are mainly progress. Uh, and then when you're going into the required arguments, this, this is listed down here. So the first thing we want to do is actually initialize a new Borg repository. And it's a specific command you have to do. And you have to do this every single time you create a repository. But once you create the repository, then it's another command to actually create the archives. So let's go down and initialize the repository. So let's go Borg uh, init. And then you have to use some type of encryption. And what I want to do is the easiest, which is simply setting up a repo key. And the option for that is dash dash encryption. And then we want to put the equal sign. And I'm going to just use the repo key option for encryption. And then the last thing you want to put in is the repository where you want to create the Borg archives. So that will be our test Borg directory, which is, is basically putting the repository of where you want your backups to be sent to. So we type, I'm going to use the, that test Borg folder. So it's, and actually let's type it all the way out. So let's go home, Josh, and then test Borg and press enter. And I apologize for that. I actually misspelled encryption. So just bear with me. But anyway, that's the command Borg init and then e dash dash encryption equals repo key. And then the directory where you want the backups to be stored. So let's press enter there. And it will ask you for your pass phrase. And that's basically what the repo key is. It's just a password that you give it. So I'm just giving mine one, two, three, four, five, but it doesn't matter. And this question right here asks you, do you want your passphrase to be displayed for verification? And um, and the default is no, I always go with no. And then that's pretty much it. And basically what happens during this process, Borg sets up a bunch of configuration files on how to actually store the archives once they're created based on what you put in the initial initialization command. So let me go down and list out that directory so you guys can see. So let's go uh, test Borg. I want to list out that directory so you can see all the files. They have a readme, they have a config, they have a data folder, which is where your backups are stored uh, and they're encrypted. And as I stated by default, it encrypts it using LZ4. So, and then just some more configuration files are put in, in this directory. Okay, so now that we configured our directory, the next thing you want to do is go down and create a backup. And it's a very basic command on how to actually create the backups. And it's basically Borg create. And then you want to put the path to your repo, which is that, that repo that we created. So it's home, Josh, and then test Borg. And then you have to put colon, colon. And then you want to name the actual archive. So one thing I always do is use the host name. So the host name for this computer is Athena. And then I always put like a date. And so I recommend people doing that. And this will help you organize your backups. Even though it has a lot of information stored within it, uh, I always like to do that. That's, that's a habit from when I used to do backups on Windows networks. So I would always put the date. And sometimes I even go as far as putting a time, depending on how frequent the backups are. But today's date is June 6th. So 06 and then 06. And so that's what I want to name the, the archive. And now let's put the actual source of the backup. So that's going to be our test directory. So it's home, Josh, and then test. And you can actually sh shorten this by just putting a tilde. I'm just putting a full path, but that's pretty much it. And you can do multiple folders and I'll do that on the second one so you can see, but I'm going to archive the test directory. So that's pretty much it on this command. So let's run it right fast. See what happens. Press enter. Boom. It's going to access for our repo password. So let's type that in one, two, three, four, five. 
and now it's done and it's very short for this one because as you know i only had like two files in that directory and those files didn't even have any information in them so um it's gonna run super fast but a quick note when you first running let's say you're running this on your home directory it's gonna take a while and it's all depending on how big how much information you have stored in your home directory or whatever directory you're copying over okay now let me go down and create another archive and i'm going to use that same directory let's put underscore two to make it a different repository or a different archive and then let's also look at some stats while this thing is going through uh so that's another option you can add to it and this will give you some more information uh after the archive is created so let's go down in and i want to add another directory to this and for this one i'll go down and put the tilde here so you guys can see that that work as well as i can shorten the command a little bit but also let me add another directory and i want to use the i have a python directory so i'm gonna use that one is it's like python underscore kit so I want to add that to the second archive. So let's go down and press enter on that. It's going to access for our password again. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So as you can see, it spits out some more information. That's why I added that stat to it. So you can see information of the archive once it completes. Uh, so time start. Well, actually up here, archive name, then archive fingerprint, and then the time start. And as you can see, it only took like one second or less than a second. So 0.57 seconds. And then the number of files and utilization of max. Let's see, archive size. And then it shows you the original size of the archive and the compressed size. So this shows you after it's compressed and then the duplicated size. And also this is the chunk index, which shows you unique chunks. So this is basically the new files that were in this archive versus, you know, the old files. Okay, so now that we have both of those repos created, let me go down and show you guys how to actually list out the repos that we created or the archives that we created. So if we type a command, it's simply Borg list and then the archive, which is home, Josh, and then test Borg and press enter. It's going to access for our password again type that in press enter and it will list out each one of the archives so one thing i want to do is show you guys how to actually list out what's in the archive which is basically the next thing so we can run this same command but let's add the actual archive to the end of it by putting colon colon and then let's paste in that archive name and press enter it's going to access for our password again, press enter, boom. And that shows you all the files that are within that archive. And so if, if we did that on the other archive, you know, it'll show that Python directory that we added. But since this is the first one, it'll only show those files that we first archived within that first archive. So now that we've done that, I want to show you guys how to actually recover the files from the archive because as you as you already know the these files are encrypted within the borg backup so we have to actually extract them from the archive and the first thing i want to do is actually cd to the test directory first and the reason we need to do that is because borg actually extracts everything to the current working directory so if we type pwd print working directory right now we're in home josh in test and we can actually extract this anywhere so if we want to create a directory on our external hard drive uh it'll archive it to a directory outside of, on that same hard drive so if you have the space for it because it'll remove the compression and everything so i'm gonna just extract it within that test directory which is where we pull in the files from and you can actually extract just specific files but i'm gonna just pull that one archive since it's a short archive i'm gonna pull out that, that whole directory out of the archive so if we type borg extract and then the archive so we want to put that in there and since i already have it pasted or well, copied so let me just paste it in here 
and then you want to specify what you want to get out of the archive and just so you guys know you don't have to put the forward slash in there uh because this is actually you know not your home directory it's all included within this archive so this is kind of like a representation of the home directory uh if you're using you know a full path if that makes sense so let me go down and paste that in there but that's the directory that we want to archive it's going to ask us for our password again and we press enter and then now let's actually ls this directory and before we archive this directory, the only thing that was in there was these two files. So now you see that the folder is there. So that's the extracted folder from the Borg archive that we created. So if we CD into that directory, let's go CD home. You'll see that it has the full path of all the files that are in there. And then actually let's just run an LS so you guys can see. Cool, and that's those files again that we originally archived. So let's say the files within the test directory got corrupted or something. We can grab them out of there and replace these two in within this directory, replace with the ones from the actual archive. So that's how you actually recover your files. Now, lastly, let me go down and show you guys how to actually delete a archive if we don't need it anymore. And it's a simple command. It's basically delete. So we go Borg. We have to use Borg and then delete option. And then we want to specify that archive. So if we go home, Josh, test Borg, boom, and then type the two colons. And then we want to type that archive in there, which... Uh, I should have copied it again, but give me one second. Let me copy it up here and let's put that archive there. Name and press enter. It's going to ask us for our password. Press enter. Boom. And so that thing is gone now. And if we type Borg list and let's list out the archives under that directory that we under that Borg directory or repository and then test Borg, boom, press enter. And as you can see, we all we have now is that latest archive that we created, which is the underscore two. So that's pretty much how you use Borg. Uh, there is a lot more features in there. Uh, just check out their man page or go to their documentation site. It has a lot of great information on how to actually use this application to create great snapshots and archives of your information on your system. And I always recommend, you know, you putting those archives or creating your Borg archive on an external drive and storing that external hard drive somewhere. You know, you can keep backups of it uh, in different locations. You can put one in a safe deposit box if you need to, you know, just so you always have a, a backup. Even if it's like a month behind, you at least have some form of a backup. You may lose your work for the last 30 days, but you won't lose everything that you have on your computer and have no way of recovering. It. So backups are very important of your system. And it's a good thing to understand how important backups are especially if you're getting into the IT field. Because that's one of the things, you know, that as a systems administrator or a network administrator, you know, you really have to understand, you know, understanding the whole disaster recovery and all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you got some out of it. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment box below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, keep it techie.